Awo, shalom, Rastafari. We're going to continue with this for the Palm Sunday, right? Rastafari and Palm Sunday mystery. There's a there's a two truths. Those who have um, whether initiated or not, but those who have studied ancient, you know, the ancient Kamite and the Hebraic that that link, especially through the Macian, through the Macian sort of. Uh, resources, evidences, and commentaries of Gerald Macy and have really recognized that link, that Afro-Shemitic, that African, that Ethiopian link, and thus the Judeo-Christian or the Ethiopian Hebrew, like Amos 9 and 7 basically sums it up. But then there's a, there's a I'm not going to say a deeper, but there is a, a mystery in a sense behind that and it has to do with the whole solar lunar and is represented in Kedistin Glamardium and her child, as in the Old Testament, is represented within the ark. There's the ark, right? And Mary is likened to the ark. So definitely check out um, the Ethiopian Renaissance, Haile Selassie, Black Madonna, um, new series that we're seeking to put up, post up to Rastafari Sabbatical first, but also if it's within timing, we'll put it up on Ethiopian World Net. And we are going into what I call the Ethiopic Talmud, right? Now, a lot of folks say they, they get crazy and stupid because they don't really understand and because they're unstable and unlearned. When we say Talmud, it comes from the Ethiopic Telemede, which means to become accustomed to or habitual. And in the Hebrew, it's in the sense of learning and study. Now, there's the Babylonian Talmud. There's the Jerusalem Talmud. But then there's also for I and I, and our divine heritage, the Ethiopic Talmud. And we're speaking of books like the Kibber Neges. We're, we're speaking of books like the Gedra Adam. Right? We want to touch even on the canon, when some people say, well, Enoch is a good book, but it's not a part of the canon. Well, who's uh, Kenona? Whose kana are you dealing with? Whose rod and whose reed are you dealing with? And a lot of the Protestants, you know, may John not just bless their hearts, may he bless them, but may he also open up their eyes and they won't be so colorblind to really recognize that why Enoch and Ethiopic Enoch is so important is because it's a part of Jah, the true and living God's true canon, right? But then they get into Protestantism and these isms and schisms. But we're in the West coming out, and this is what... What, what the Exodus, the Passover, the Pesach, as one sister, I and I, Sister Emmanuel, she was saying to I and I in the text, um, moving on, passing, you know, like, let's move, almost like moving on, you know. This is what Passover is for the true and faithful Israelites, as Peter Tosh said in, in his song, The Israelites, right, The Israelites. And giving the item all hints of certain meditations to meditate during these this seven-day Passover season, right? It's not about so much the rites or the rituals in the sense of do, do, don't do, do, but it's more about a function of the heart and the mind being, being um, properly orientated, turned, to, turned forward and not backward, that repentance, so one is able to receive, right? And then one will be able to give, you know, it said that um, faith receives and love gives. Now, may I not go forward with this particular part right here because what we, what we had left off on is from this. We want to show this cover right here. This is from um, Ethiopia, the Kingdom of God Ministries, right? And you can search it out, find it on the Internet, right? Um, they have a question and answer page, which is interesting. You know, which is interesting, we have to be mature in um, knowledge, and Kidanachi means our covenant. So this uh, High Holy Day, right, the High Holy Day, when people talk about the Exodus and when you follow, say, the Ashkenazi, right, they basically, you know, are still in the Old uh, Testament or the Old Covenant, but we as the Ethiopians and the Hebrews spoken of in Amos 9 and 7, where he says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians, the Bene Kushin, ye Ethiopia lijoch unto me, O Bene Israel, or ye Israel lijoch. So he compares the children of Israel to the Ethiopians. So if you have 
reading comprehension and you understand that what the Father says, Abba means, right? And we, we see this doubling down and this manifestation of the two truths, as we mentioned with the Ark of the Covenant, which our teaching or Ethiopic Talmud, like the Kibber and the Guest, the Queen of Sheba and only some Minulik, shows us is in the Old Testament was a shadow, right? In the New Testament, that reality of the shadow. So in the Old Testament, it was the Luna or the Hebrew, right? And now the true light, the true illumination has come. Now, I find it interesting that we have, for I and I, we have almost two, there's this duality in the scriptures. For example, um, Sunday, the 24th of March, is what's known in the West as Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. And in the East, five weeks later on the 28th of, of, of April, would be that whole Sa'ina, that whole Sa'ina. So we have this Old Testament, New Testament. We have the two truths, the Father and the Son. And I noticed something very interesting when I looked at the calendar that I mentioned to you from Nabura Id, Ernius Kabeda Wanda Yesus, or published by Ethiopia, the Kingdom of God, to reveal the divine truth about Ethiopia's entity as the kingdom of God and Ethiopian's identity as the people of the Holy Covenant with God, and so to safeguard and promote all that pertains to Ethiopia and Ethiopians. Now, I love the brother, and we've had certain, you know, conversations via the, you know, the questions and answers, and, and of course, uh, without apology, I know it's Rastafari, but even though, One's like, I love what the brother is doing to preserve the ancientcy. We pray that he gets the fullness of the vision of his imperial majesty because it seems as though he was part of the blame Hala Selassie crowd as well, even though he was appointed to his Nabura Idinet. Nabura Id is the keep of Aksu, right? So he's also in exile with, with this remnant, right? Even with the Rastafari remnant. So, like the scripture says, they are, they are, um, they may be enemies for the gospel's sake, that they don't get it or that they seem to attribute to his majesty those parts that they don't see in prophecy. So this is why our role and responsibility is so very important as well. And so let's move forward to this particular example of the two truths. So we have the, the, the example of Christ, right, riding on the donkey, entering into Jerusalem. And then we found this particular picture. I don't know if you've seen this particular picture right here. Let's put it kind of side by side on a level. His Imperial Majesty riding on, whether this is a small horse or a donkey, it looks a little bit like a, a donkey right there. But when you look at this imagery right there, so we have one, an artist's representation, almost like the shadow, and then we have here the true substance. Now, for this particular month, our Passover month, or Warcha Megabit, Megabit, right? Remember Megabi and Migab and Gabi and, and Gebba is a very interesting etymology. He has a quote here from Ermius, Tindete Ermius, Haya Raf Haya Sos, or chapter 23. And remember what we had, you can go over the vid. Right for this year's uh, Pesach um, Passover um, vid, where we spoke about, we went through the Seder, you know, the Seder, the Rastafari Seder, and we came across this area of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 23. And Jeremiah chapter 23, it speaks of the future restoration and the conversion of Israel. And it's a message, right? It's a message against the faithless shepherds. You understand? The faithless shepherds. The, the faithless shepherds, whether they be our color, scripturally, prophetically, according to the good news, they are not of our kind, in the words of the Khan, of those who, who are able to see and speak the truth because they still deny to we, the black people, our true identity in the King of Kings and his Christ, 
right? And that is the half of the story that needs to be told. And let me just open this particular picture right here as well. I think this also will help maybe bring home the point for those who are able to receive and those who are spiritual. If not, one will one can grow and pray for wisdom and, and doubt not. Now, you see this right here? This is the horse, right? This is the horse, the donkey, and the mule, right? This is also contained in this particular Torah portion right there. I just find it interesting, right, that, you know, we were talking about Obama going to the state of Israel, you know, five days prior to Yeshua, our true black Lord, our true Adonai, Yeshua HaMoshiach, entering into Jerusalem, and then we have his imperial majesty. So the Father, Son, the two truths are revealed even in this, as well as the, the, the two manifestations of Exodus, the Exodus which happened and the Exodus which is happening the future restoration and conversion of Israel, we Ethiopian, Hebrews, Judeo-Christian, anointed ones, but there's also a message against the faithless shepherds, right, the faithless shepherds, which much, many in the black church and the boule and among those who are, um, you know, uh, almost similar to the Jews in the time of in, you know, in the time of Yeshua, in the time of the Bain Ha Elohim, and then we see the same ones who are also many of the so-called great civil rights people and everything, and they didn't mention a peep, right? I mean, many of them, besides ones like Adam Clayton Powell and ones of, you know, his spirituality and, and reality, make mention of his imperial majesty in the time. I mean, even the whole thing with the, the um, Brown versus Board of Education, we have a picture of his majesty standing right there on the steps of the Capitol, right at that very time, and still nothing was mentioned. Traveling all over, newspapers writing, even Eisenhower was saying that his imperial majesty, Hala Selassie, told him things that he should have known already. This is, and he's the one that a lot of people now are, uh, are holding on to, Eisenhower, because he said the military industrial complex. Remember, that Eisenhower said that his imperial majesty, who didn't have, you know, Eisenhower's type of Western Gentile education, taught him things that he should have known already. So hallelujah, may God bless the soul of Eisenhower for that, um, for that acknowledgement of the truth. Now, the portion that is quoted right here, and we barely have even gotten to it, is verses, well, this is good, 1 to 5. So let's deal with verses 1 to 5. Right, verses 1 to 5, Isaiah chapter 20, right, chapter 23, right, and let's just read into it right here. And it was thought at the very beginning, it says, Woe be to the pastors, right, and we say to the black pastors and preachers, especially those who do know better. There's all, there are ones who do know better out there. They're the, they're the front runners. You know, your Sharptons, your Jacksons, and all the rest of the sons and whatever. Right? It says, Woe, woe, be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, the pastors that do the saith Yahweh. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, Elohe Israel, the true God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith Yahweh. And when we see what's happening right now, we should be in a post-racial time. This whole civil rights thing should have brought kumbaya and the end of poverty, the war against poverty, and all of these other things, the welfare, fear wealth, the black man's manhood, and, you know, always blaming the victim. But the victim has to hear the word of truth, has to hear the word of strength, where it says that, and even the weak will say, I am strong. Verse 2, or verse, uh, verse 3, and I will gather the remnant. Now, the remnant doesn't mean the whole, everybody. It's always say all black people, you know, are not beta Israel, although they may be racially, right, but they're not of that remnant if they don't hear and receive that word. You see what I'm saying? There is, a, there is that inner of the innocence. If they don't have that innocence, 
And we're not talking about, you know, in the Western Gentile sense. We're talking about the inner sensibility to receive in their head and their heart and have a love of the truth. He says, I will gather the remnant, speaking to the remnant, the kareta of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Part two coming forward. Stay tuned. Shalom.